So today we're going to be having a little bit of fun with particle simulations in Blender and we're going to be doing hair interactions. We're going to be making this animation. We're going to make a simple comb and a comb is going to be able to kind of go through these hair particles and kind of just comb them like this. Now um, in the viewport here, it's not looking that great because I do have it set to EV, but um, if you wanted to, you could render this out with cycles and you'd get a much better um, result. But the idea here is just how to look at setting up some hair, how to make it dynamic, how to add a comb that we're gonna make and then kind of make it interact with the hair particles. I think this is really fun because there might be a time where you wanna have um, hair particles interacting with an object. So let's jump in and I will be uploading the final blend file to my Patreon as well. Um, all of that's in the description. So let's jump in and make this um, hair comb simulation. Okay, so in a new scene in Blender, we're gonna select the default cube and we're gonna go into edit mode. And with everything active, we're just gonna go, let's go to our front view, we're gonna go S, X, and let's go two. So we're gonna scale it on the X by a factor of two. And maybe we're gonna go into our right view here, we're gonna go S, Y and flatten that on the Y. And let's make it, you know, a bit skinnier. So it's kind of like, because it's gonna be our comb, right? So we're also gonna go into the front view again with everything active. We're gonna go S, Z, and just flatten this a bit. So this is gonna be kind of like the base of our comb. And I know it doesn't look like a comb yet, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna come over here, hovering over one of these edges, and if you press Control R or Command R, you should see a yellow line appear, and that's gonna be the loop cut tool. So we're gonna just left click twice, and we're gonna come here to the loop cuts and slide. We're gonna take the number of cuts, we're gonna drag it up. So let's go with a number. Let's go with 35 as a number, 35, okay? And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to our front of a graphic and in X-ray mode, we're just gonna click and drag, select all of these faces at the top. And if these are all active, we need to make sure that it's actually face select. And then we're gonna press F3 and we're gonna type in checker and go for checker deselect. And it's gonna select every second one. Um, if you wanted to, you could just go in there manually and just you know select each one. Um, but we're gonna go E to extrude and Z and extrude it up. And let's go about something like this. And then E to extrude again a little bit up. And um, you can see here we have um, a little bit extra on the end. So I'm just gonna select that and just delete those faces. I'm gonna turn off the X-ray and I'm just gonna go to my edge select. Shift Alt left click just to loop select this and press F to fill that. So now it's a little bit more even. And I think what we're gonna do as well is Probably just select all of these bottom verts and go G, Z, move them down a bit. And then just select all of these top ones. And let's just go and change our transform here to individual origins and just go S to scale it, just to make it a bit smaller. So something like that. So now we can tab back out and we have our comb. We're just gonna go to our modifiers and we're gonna go add modifier. We're gonna go search and type in sub. And let's get a subdivision surface. And now we have a rough looking comb here. All we need to do is bump up the levels here. So we're gonna to go to free and let's tab in and we can go control R hovering over here, left click once and just slide up a loop just to kind of tighten that up a bit. Um, I think that's looking okay. And let's come now back into object mode. We're gonna to come to the drop down here and apply this. Let's right click and go shade smooth. So now we have a comb over here. Pretty cool. Okay, so now let's go shift A. Let's add in a mesh object. We're gonna add in a UV sphere. We're gonna go G, Z and move it up above the comb, like so. Right click and go shade smooth. And let's go over to our particle settings and click plus to give it particles. We're gonna go and make it hair. Click on advanced and then come here to the hair length and let's just drag it down to like, let's go 1.5, I think 1.5, yeah. 1.5 meters should be fine. And we're gonna go down to our viewport display. And let's take this trans steps up to four. We're gonna to go to children and then make it interpolated. And our viewport display amount, we can leave it at 10. Um, let's take the render amount to 30. And we do wanna go up to the emission and let's just make this number something like 300 instead. It's a bit more reasonable. And let's also see what we can do under the render. If you were gonna render this, you'd wanna make sure to come here and enable B spline under the path and bump up the steps. That's gonna give you um, a less jaggedy hair. So it's gonna have more 
points that make up the hair. So just keep that in mind that will kind of take up the performance on your computer. So um, always think about that. But I think a level of four should be fine. And now we have hair, but the thing is we want hair dynamics. Now we're going to come over under the emission. We've got this little button here called hair dynamics, which we can enable. Come to the drop down here and you're going to see we have some things here like collision, structure and volume and so on. Um, let's just come here to structure and let's take the stiffness up to 1.5. And now let's go over to frame one and we're going to hit the space bar. And now we've got our hair simulating. Okay, so with the stiffness here, you can bring this amount down till you're happy with um, how stiff it looks. So we can go keep going back to frame one. Let's hit the space bar. Now it's a little bit more, um, yeah, it's not as saggy. So this is completely up to you. I might even take the stiffness down to 0.5. See what that looks like. Okay, that, I think 0.5 was actually perfect, which I think was the default. So um, as long as you know that's what that does and that's something you can play around with. Okay, so how do we make the actual comb interact with this? So let's go to our front graphic and we're gonna go G, move the comb over. I'm gonna go R, Z, nine, zero and hit enter. So now it's rotated like so. And now let's come over here and we're gonna grab our hair over here, our hairball. Let's just go over to our modifiers and just turn it off for the viewport and the render for now. Let's just come over to frame 20. And on frame 20, we're gonna grab the comb. I'm gonna come over here and just rotate it like so. And we're going to go I and insert a location and rotation keyframe. And then we're going to come over to frame 50. And on frame 50, we're going to go G and move it over here, like so. And we're going to go I, insert a location and rotation. So it, if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we can see this is what we have. And then let's come to frame 70. And on frame 70, we're going to go G, move it over here, R to rotate. Up like so, we're gonna go I and insert a location and rotation. And then let's come to frame 90 and go G and bring it over here and go I, insert a location and rotation. And then on frame 120, we'll just grab frame 20 here to keyframe and go Shift D to duplicate, drag that all the way to 120. So the comb will slide back. So if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, this is what we're gonna see. Okay, now if you wanted to, if that's too fast for you, you could always come here to frame 20, grab all of these keyframes and go S to scale it to make it a bit slower, um, but that's optional. So I just scaled it a little bit now, so it ends at 180, but it's completely up to you, okay? But I'm gonna actually end at 180 frames so the simulation isn't too long. So now make sure to save. Let's grab the ball. Let's go to our uh, modifiers and enable it for the viewport and the render again. And now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar. Oh yeah, obviously it's just animated, but we need to actually grab the comb. We need to go to our physics and we need to give it a collision. So it knows to collide. So let's go back to frame one, hit the space bar. And you can see it's gonna be very slow because it's obviously simulating. But now our comb is combing our hair. How cool is that? Okay, so what we need to do now is grab our hairball We'll quickly go to our hair settings and we'll just do a few things here. We'll go down to the children and we'll go to clumping and let's give this a little bit of clump like so. And let's also go over here to the um, roughness and let's just go to the uniform and let's just bump that up just a little bit and also with the end point. Okay, now that's looking a lot better. So now we just need to cache this out. So under our particles, there should be a cache option somewhere. I'm going to make mine 180 frames and I'm going to make sure to save and I'm going to click bake and it'll bake this in to our um, blend file here. And there we have it. It's now baked. Only took a few seconds. So let's have a look at that. There we go. And then it cuts back through like so. Pretty cool. So now we've made a combing simulation. So let's um, go to our render settings. Let's change it to cycles. Um, if you have a GPU, I recommend you use it under the device and then under your render samples, let's change it to 50. And we can now go over here and shift A, let's add in a camera. If you don't already have a camera, I guess we already have a camera in the scene. So let's grab the camera that we do have, press zero on the number pad to go into the camera view. 
And how you want to position your camera is completely up to you. So I'm not going to tell you, you know, push it, put it here or put it there. Um, it's completely up to you. So I might just go over something like this. I might go to my camera settings and just change the focal length to 90. Kind of get in here nice and close. Something like that. And you see we have the first 20 frames here where the comb isn't moving. That's just so the hair can kind of fall into place first. So I'm going to just come here and start at frame 20. So that's where my animation is going to be starting. So then it just looks a little bit better. There we go. Pretty cool. So it's almost like a bit of a loop. Go shift A, let's add in a light. We're gonna go airy light. Let's just go G, move it over, R to rotate. And let's go to our light um, properties. Let's give out a strength of 400. Let's increase the size. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can see our light here. So I'm just gonna go shift D to duplicate it, rotate it. Kind of have another one coming over here from the back. I'll make that one like much stronger. So we get some nice rim lighting from the back. And then I'll just duplicate another one, have that kind of coming from the front, like so. And I might just move my camera in just a little bit closer. And I go to my render settings and also give it uh, motion blur. And now I'm gonna select my comb. I'm gonna go over to my material properties. I'm gonna, it already should have a new material, which I'm gonna call comb because we made it out of the default cube, it had a default material. And under the surface here, I'm gonna take the base color and I might make it kind of like a pink and bring down the roughness just a little bit. Go to the subsurface and give it a weight of 0.3. And let's grab the fur ball and let's go to materials, give that a new material and we'll call it fur. And that's actually gonna be the ball and the fur here. So we're just gonna make the base color, we're gonna go with pink as well maybe more of a pinkish kind of purple or something that kind of contrasts. You guys can play around with it if you want. I'm gonna just, so I'll go with something like this. And um, if you want, you can go to your particles and under your hair shape, you can bring down the root diameter to 0.5. So it's a little bit more wispy. And now let's drag for here and kind of get a shot, something like that. And let's go render and render image. And there we have it, it's now rendered. And you can see we have a bit of motion blur happening here, which is really cool. And that's how you make a hair simulation. So if you wanted to now, you could, um, you know, I mean, I guess you can still play around with your camera position if you wanted to, but you could now render this out as a final animation. If you wanted to, you could always add in a backdrop by just adding in a plane. Completely optional, by the way. Um, but it's just all like the extras that you could do if you wanted to. Just like add that in. And then kind of give it a color. But yeah, go ahead and give it a shot. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I will be uploading this um, blend file here to my Patreon and I'll call it Comb Simulation. If you guys want to kind of check that out. So I'll see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial.